Hi, it's Mark from Top Local. We're here with Bernie Pollock, Pollock Automotive in Vancouver, Vancouver's best loved, best voted, and favorite place to get your car serviced. How are you doing, Bernie? Doing very well, Mark. So we're going to talk about a Range Rover Sport, and you did some work on the parking brake. What was going on with this vehicle? Well, the vehicle came to our shop with a uh, warning light on the dash and a rather irritating bell ringing in the vehicle when you're driving the car. Every time you stop at a light and then go to accelerate, the, a warning chime would come on. There's a warning light on the dash for the parking brake, and then there'd be this an actual warning service parking brake system. So that was, that's what was going on with the vehicle. So what did you do to try and diagnose this? So um, being an electronic issue, uh, at least electronic warnings uh, and Range Rovers being the sophisticated vehicle they are, we plugged our, di <coughs> excuse me, plugged our diagnostic scan tool into the vehicle and uh, retrieved one trouble code for an overheated parking brake module. And as soon as we cleared the code, the code would return immediately. So we knew there's a defect in the module based on that, based on that particular symptom. Um, and it was basically a matter of replacing the parking brake module to solve the concern. So the parking brake module, is that just an electronic part or was there mechanical parts as well? Actually, it's a rather, uh, it's a rather uh, involved piece. It sounds like just an electronic module. When, you hear, when I hear the word module, I think of a little electronic piece, but this one actually is, there's a lots, of, lots to it. I'll show, I'll share some pictures. Uh, so this is the uh, parking brake module. This is the electronic and, and motor portion of the module. This module actually has, uh, so it's electronic, plus it has the actuator motors and the, and the cables as well. And uh, in the next photo I'll show you, this is the actual, this is a, sort of a larger view of what you get when you buy the part, or this is the old one removed from the vehicle. But you can see there's uh, two large cables, one on each side. These go to each wheel and, and actually link up to the parking brake shoes. And there's a third cable, which is actually actually an emergency release. So should the electric motors fail for some reason, there's actually a way you can manually pull a handle in the vehicle and, and release the parking brake. But uh, in the case of this vehicle, of course, that didn't matter because the, the defect was in the uh, electronic module itself. And just while we're looking at pictures, here's our here's a 2008 Range Rover. It's the vehicle we serviced. Okay, so that sounds like a lot of work to replace. Is this a pretty common failure part? It's a fairly common failure part on these things. We don't do a lot of them, but, but they do fail from time to time. And, and the fact that the dealer stocks it is always, to me, a, an indicator that it, it's, it's a common part. We have done a few of them from, from time to time. And it is a lot of work to replace. Uh, you know, the, the module was buried up underneath the vehicle. There's, there's covers and things to be removed to get at the module. And then the, um, and then the uh, cables, of course, have to be removed. They're all bolted in quite nicely. They don't just flop around. They're all... Like it's a nicely built vehicle, they bolt everything in, and, uh, you know, every few inches. You have to remove that, and then the brake shoes have to be removed to uh, install the cable. So it's a fair bit of work, a few hours. So how were the brake shoes on this? Just as a sideline. No, the brake shoes are fine. Yeah, they were in good shape. And of course, once we take it all apart and put it back together, we readjust the brake shoes as well, so everything's in good shape. So it's, uh, yeah, it's 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 all done. All so done good and it should last a long time. So this sounds like a pretty complicated way of doing a parking brake. Is this um, is this similar to other vehicles? Yeah, a lot of other vehicles do it. Uh, a lot of other European cars for sure. Um, they're, uh, yeah, and I'm not sure sometimes, I wonder why they, they make things so complicated. I mean, I guess, I guess, Sometimes I think it's because they can, and because you know it, it's nicer to go. Oh, all you do is just pull a little button or push a button, and your parking brake's activated, and it activates it to the right sort of amount. Um, but you know, to me, sometimes when you have when you're faced with a large repair bill like this job, you know, and and chimes and warning lights, and you have no option but to fix it, it makes me wonder whether you know whether whether it's all worth it in the end, or whether just a simple cable system would be would be better. But anyways, that's what it is, and. Uh, you, know, you will find it in a lot of vehicles, and, and most new cars have it, at least Europeans for sure. So just to remind everybody and me, the parking brake is actually a different braking system than the main braking system of the car, isn't it? It is, yeah. The, the parking brake is a separate, it uses its own brake shoes, although some of them, uh, some will use uh, the disc brake caliper in the rear, and they'll actually have a, a lever on the caliper, so 
mechanically activates the brake pad. So there's actually a few less parts in that system. So either way, there's I like the shoe system better because it, it isolates it from the calipers and it makes it completely separate. Um, and I, and I, I think actually in the end you have less trouble with that system. So and I imagine since this is an expensive repair and maybe not the most, um, you know, if you're living in a flat area, it probably wouldn't be the most um, needed repair. But with warning lights and bells ringing after every stop, uh, it's not something you could avoid. No, you, you can't. And um, I guess I guess it's good because it, it, even if you, like you said, even if you live in a flat area and you don't use your parking brake, and a lot of people with automatic transmission cars don't use them, myself included, you know, because of the, once you put it in park, it locks the vehicle in place. But it's it's important to have it as an emergency brake. And if you're on a steep hill, it, you know, it's, it's it puts a strain on the drivetrain to just use the park uh, function on the transmission. So it's good to fix it. But yeah, it's, it's hard to avoid with that bell ringing. We had a Jag a while ago that had a, a similar system. It was even worse. I mean, the moment you drive it, uh, it, it would just go bing, 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 bing. The whole time you're driving down the road, so you really couldn't avoid fixing that. It's totally irritating. So, yeah, it's. I mean, it's nice if you can put stuff off, but this is not a thing on these vehicles that you can. So the, then, then uh, the my way of fixing it, which like I like to use the black tape on the check engine light, I'd have to have some kind of earmuff protect ear protection to <laughs> be able to drive my vehicle. Exactly. You have, you have to turn your radio up really loud. <laughs> All right. Well, folks, if uh, you're looking for a better solution than using black tape to hide your check engine warning light or wear ear protection to stop the bells ringing in your vehicles, the guys to see in Vancouver are Pollock Automotive. They will look after your vehicle, everything from high-end luxury vehicles to your general you know, pony car that you drive every day to work. They fix them and keep them running for a long time, saving you a tremendous amount of money. Call them at 604-327-7112 or check out their website, pollockautomotive.com. We've got hundreds of videos on there, thousands of subscribers, and um, we're approaching a million video views. So check us out. Thanks a lot, Bernie. Thanks, Mark.